with the election of Ulysses S. Grant in 1868, the era of good stealings began, as general corruption turned a blind eye to the shady business dealings of the time, and even took part in some of the illegal activity himself, as evidenced by the credit mobilier scandal. At the center of nearly every crooked transaction was gold. Notorious millionaires Jim Fisk and Jay Gould conspired to corner the gold market, and almost succeeded in making themselves the controlling power of the U.S. economy. The nation soon fell on hard times, as the Panic of 1873 called even more attention to the issue of gold and silver, currency. The Hayes-Tilden standoff of 1876 led to the Compromise of 1877, in which the Republicans got the White House in exchange for the end of Reconstruction in the still-healing South. This spelled disaster for the newly freed African Americans, as seen in the emergence of Jim Crow laws and other legislation that basically reinstated slavery. With the Supreme Court decision in Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896, blacks in America would not gain true equality until the civil rights movement of the 1960s. The hallmark achievement of the years following the Civil War was the construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, which physically and symbolically bound the country together with iron ties. With this rapid industrialization, a whole new world of job opportunities opened up to the average American, and settlement on the Great Plains became a reality. Industrialization was also responsible for the creation of a whole new generation of millionaires, as men like Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller employed tactics like vertical integration and monopolies to gain the upper hand in the ever-growing American market. With so many su stories of success, a perversion of Charles Darwin's evolution theory emerged. Social Darwinism delivered the idea that rich people made themselves rich, giving the poor no excuse for their current economic status. Industrialization brought with it an increase in the standard of living for most people within the country. European immigrants jumped at the opportunity to start a new life, providing cheap labor for growing American corporations. This often undercut wages, leading to the creation of organizations like the Knights of Labor and the National Labor Union that pioneered for basic workers' rights like the eight-hour workday. While some victories were won, the fight for fair labor was still on the horizon. From 1870 to 1900, the population of the United States doubled, and populations in the cities tripled as skyscrapers and electric trolleys began to form the first American metropolis. Department stores like Macy's heralded a new age of consumerism, which brought with it unprecedented sanitation issues. Impure water, uncollected garbage, unwashed bodies, and improper plumbing made cities unsanitary and unsafe causing the wealthy to flee to the suburbs, creating the nation's first slums. Most inhabitants of these dumbbell tenements were from Eastern Europe, as a wave of new immigration swept in during the last decades of the 19th century. With this new surge of immigrants came a new surge of nativism, as native-born Americans feared the sullying of the Anglo-Saxon race. The uproar of these bigots precipitated the first federal legislation restricting immigration in 1882. Interest in public education increased during this time, as some degree of education between compulsory for the American child. In the South, men like Booker T. Washington and W.E.B. Du Bois fought for economic and social equality for African Americans. Du Bois would go on to found the NAACP in 1910. The fight for women's suffrage gained new support, as women across the country refused to be brushed aside once again. The coming of the railroad, and with it settlement of the West, spelled disaster for the Native American population, as their lands and way of life were ripped away from them. The extermination of the bison herds that once blanketed the prairies doomed the Plains Indians, as the bison were at the heart of their lifestyle. The Dawes Severalty Act of 1887 dis dissolved the legal entities of the tribes, and stripped away tribal lands granting individual or family plots, in direct contradiction with the Indian belief that no one could truly own the land. Missionaries and schools strove to Americanize the Native Americans, undercutting their very way of life. 
The economy of the West began to grow as mining took off and the innovation of the refrigerated railroad car made it possible for ranchers to ship their meat to market. The Homestead Act of 1862 incentivized pioneering Americans to head west, promising them 160 acres of land. Unfortunately, this was not nearly enough for these unlucky farmers to survive, and many gave up after only a year of roughing it out on the plains. By 1890, the U.S. Census officially declared that the frontier was closed. America had expanded as far west as it could, begging the question of what to do next. With the 19th century drawing to a close, America began to shift from its traditional isolationist policies into a role on the world stage. Overseas expansion was partially influenced by the yellow journalism of Joseph Pulitzer and William Randolph Hearst, who published sensationalized and sometimes even fictionalized headlines in the hope of selling their newspapers. The U.S. began to threaten meddling European powers with the Monroe Doctrine and looked into the acquisition of new territories like the Hawaiian Islands. This new manifest destiny culminated in the Spanish-American War of 1898. When a revolt broke out in Cuba against their Spanish colonizers, American sympathy was quickly extended to the underdog island. With the mysterious explosion of the U.S. steamer ship Maine in Havana Harbor, America declared war, and a three-month struggle began. As Secretary of the Navy, Theodore Roosevelt had modernized and strengthened the U.S. Navy, securing a victory for the newly imperialist United States. In the negotiations in Paris, America freed Cuba from Spanish rule, and walked away with the new territories of Guam, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines, marking the first time that the U.S. acquired territory not directly in its sphere of influence. In 1902, the Platt Amendment became the new Cuban Constitution, which bound the island to the United States by promising that the U.S. could intervene and restore order in case of anarchy, trade freely with Cuba, and maintain a permanent naval base at Guantanamo Bay. With the Spanish-American War and the construction of the Panama Canal in 1904, the United States proved, once and for all, that it was the ultimate power in the Western Hemisphere, and well on its way to becoming an influential world power. <laughs>